I'm Richard Gehring with EE Times, and we are here at the Design Automation Conference with uh, Ted Vukurovich, uh, CTO of Cadence Design Systems. And Ted has just given a, a talk here about uh, automotive design, which is a big theme at the Design Automation Conference. Uh, Ted, why is automotive design a theme here, and uh, what does it have to do with EDA anyway? Great question, Richard. I think the, the committee chose automotive because it was a stellar example of the transformation from a basic platform that everybody is reliant upon of being a mechanical nature, a little bit of electronics, into one which is actually differentiated now by the electronics that are associated with that automobile. And they're in a very exponential growth with respect to the functions that are being planned to be integrated in the future. So where design automation starts to show up is the complexity of these integrations of these systems has now reached a point where the traditional methods of partitioning into smaller subsystems and then reintegration are becoming too complex to, to manage. And so there's ideal opportunities for transformation of design process and method to include software modeling, for verification analysis, trade-off analysis, right through the stack, right from system specification all the way down in through implementation and then beyond into the verification and testing cycle on the automotive platform. So it's an ideal test case for many of the things that we've talked about in ESL uh, coming to fruition in terms of real need. So are there, are there some new EDA tools that could arise uh, from the demands of the automotive industry? Yes, absolutely, and I think the three areas, I can't speak for everybody, but the three areas that Cadence has been focusing and investing tend to be in system specification. We see an interesting transformation of the relationship between the OEM and the tier one suppliers, such as uh, Bosch, Delphi, et cetera. Right? And so they're now designing systems of systems. Instead of being a system partition in subsystems, systems of systems. Mm -hmm. And as they say, stuff rolls downhill. Yeah. Well, the semiconductor guys are now sort of saying, we're not building components anymore. We're actually building subsystems mm -hmm. composed of both hardware and software elements mm -hmm. for the automotive industry. Higher complexity with even more stringent requirements for reliability and, mm -hmm. and life cycle mm -hmm. in the marketplace. So we see interesting uh, opportunities for investment in hardware software, co-design, co-verification mm -hmm. at the subsystem level, mm -hmm. and also in terms of reliability modeling analysis and system bring up Mm -hmm. on the, uh, you know, once you've got things back, how do I make sure that it works and if it doesn't work, how do I find out why not? Yeah, and wouldn't you need some connection to mechanical design as well? Um, the integration with mechanical is focused in two primary areas in the automobile cycle. And for most part today, they're managed through modeling, mm -hmm. model abstraction. So modeling the mechanical system in reference to electrical. Mm -hmm. so, so those things, the power plant and the suspension and chassis environments tend to be the ones where mm -hmm. the model is transferred into the electrical space because that's where the control mm -hmm. algorithms and structures are actually designed. Mm -hmm. right? And so there's, uh, there's activity there, but it's, not, it's still relatively partitioned between you know, uh, mechanical design elements and, and, and the electrical elements, except in these control in these control loops. Okay. So aside from automotive, what's Cadence emphasizing at this year's DAC? So a couple of things. Uh, low power design, I, mean, I think, you know, it's, it's a continuing theme and I think there's still a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. of validity because we've, we've talked about it for a long time. Yeah. I think there's delivery. You know, there's delivery of technology, there's delivery mm -hmm. of results. Uh, I think that the, the, you know, we will be consolidating even though there's a lot of emphasis around standards. It'll consolidate down in Fair, fairly short order, I expect. Mm, right. And um, and I think we're really in in, in a position to deliver a, a something that it's sort of like a a introduction on a ten year cycle of mm. a really new set of capability into the entire flow. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see is is sort of fulfilling the promise of power. Mm. Uh, oriented design. Mm -hmm. um, the second area that we, we, we've been really focusing on is in the areas of, of multi-mode simulation and analysis. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, this is something where we just get keep uh, system complexity again. Integration's great, yeah. but it means integrating lots of functions that you used to be able to partition, you used mm -hmm. to be able to say so in isolation. Here's the test bench around this sort of analog piece and this digital piece. Now you're seeing this all integrated together. A lot more interest in scalability of your analysis techniques and your verification techniques associated with that. So we've been uh, we've been emphasizing that as sort of core competency and core capability improvement going forward. 
Okay. Now you've got a low power flow out with common power format. Are people really using it for multi-voltage techniques like power gating and voltage scaling? No. Absolutely. Are they doing it successfully? Oh, absolutely. In, in production, taping in production, out chips. Taping chips. Okay. Yep, that's right. Yeah. All right. And through the whole flow, they're they are specifying with it. They are verifying and validating. They're implementing mm. uh, during the process. And so yeah. Okay. Now there's also somewhere over there a unified power format. Booth, sure. Right. Uh, so why is it that we still have these two different formats? Well, they came. They started. They started in separate. Uh, you know, sort of starting points. Mm -hmm. There was the what I would consider to be the natural tendency for um, uh, getting out there first and getting out there best, right. in the competitive nature. Mm -hmm. And and I think we're through that phase. Personally, mm -hmm. I think I think that uh, both formats have enough elements of the others to where we're going to see some convergence, and I think it'll be relatively rapid. Mm -hmm. You mentioned multi-mode simulation. Are you talking about multi-mode, multi-corner kind of analysis here? No, this is this is um, integration of detailed simulation te techniques and technologies with the, um, let's say, the fast, less accurate approaches. Mm -hmm. And it's the integration of you know discrete time simulations such mm -hmm. as uh, digit lo logical uh, right. logic simulators and stuff with your continuous time simulators like Spice, Fast Spice, things like mm -hmm. that. So it's sort of an aggregated environment mm -hmm. that has uniform modeling. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of the mechanical burden away from what people mm -hmm. traditionally do. All right. Some very advanced uh, uh, techniques mm -hmm. that allow us to do even more in terms of the acceleration of the detailed analysis to start to mm -hmm. try to get a little bit faster in terms of you know cycles per second mm -hmm. uh, system behavior that can be modeled and analyzed. All right, so what's really new with respect to this kind of simulation? I think it's some, some interesting new techniques that have been applied that are um, in the areas of uh, partitioning, mm -hmm. being able to take advantage even of more uh, latency. Some of those techniques improving in terms of methodological use. So it's not one of these things where the user is really burdened with trying mm -hmm. to set up the simulation so it can actually uh, you know, converge mm -hmm. and have an answer that, that seems rational. So mm -hmm. sort of making it more domesticated or, mm -hmm. or democratized in terms of, of what you can apply for. And then just, quite frankly, raw performance. Okay. Improvements. Last question. Anything you've seen out here on the show floor that's drawn your interest? Um, I'll, I'll be very upfront with you, as I always am. I've been on the floor exactly 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so in my exceptionally brief walkthrough, uh -huh. the, thing that, the things that probably caught most of my attention were uh, on the IP side, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there's just a whole bunch of people with a lot of real IP options mm -hmm. for uh, going in. So, so I think you know the um, you know the a lot of the themes on the rest of the booths, quite frankly, mm -hmm. they look similar to what I saw last year. Okay. Well, thanks, Ted, for your review of this year's DAC, and thank you for watching at Times TV.